Hi everyone, I'm Timothy Von Rieden, better known as Von Art Online, and this video is going to be a part of a new series I want to explore where this is more opinion based. And today I want to have a discussion about my frustrations with the current state of the art world. Quite honestly, and I'm sure a lot of you watching this may feel this way as well, I'm tired of seeing mediocrity being paraded as the new standard. And this doesn't even seem to be something that is specific just for art. It seems like every industry has been affected lately. But for this opinion video, I'm going to be focusing in specifically on art because that is what is closest to home for me. So I've been seeing artists post their work online, and it seems parallel to the Disney remakes in the film industry. They're colorful, pretty, and polished, but they're hollow, and they're absent of heart or a voice behind the work. Instead, it seems to be driven by wanting gain of some kind, whether it's social or financial. This is similar to the current AI-generated images discussion, where we're losing the core of what makes art so special. You see, I believe great art requires the human element, doesn't suggest it, and certainly doesn't generate it, but requires it. So let's get into this, and remember that this is just my opinion, and you should take it with a grain of salt, but I just really felt like I needed to get this off my chest. To start off, I want you to understand that I love art and I love other artists. When I discover a new artist whose work just instantly unlocks inspiration, it's a true treasure. For me, art is this quiet, intimate religion. I worship it, and this passion is unrivaled. I mean, maybe film would be a close second, but art is sacred to me. Just the act of even creating art is such a cool experience. Back when we were kids, you would have this neat idea in your head and you would do your best to capture it in like a visual medium. And the results back then didn't matter to us, we were just happy to do it. That's why nowadays, I can look at what my nieces and nephews are drawing at 7 years old, and yes, of course it lacks technical prowess, but it has heart. Something that a lot of artists forget about nowadays, and honestly I can't even blame them entirely. We've been conditioned the past 10-ish years, and that's specifically from social media. Artists are now compared by their numbers rather than the contents of their creations. We are rewarded for creating fast, with these images that are safe and meant to reach the largest market possible. And being an artist shouldn't have to be about creating the most commercial piece. I mean, it can be if that's the artist you want to be, but I would consider you more of a producer more so than an artist. But isn't art supposed to be subjective, so how could I even say that? Well, a true artist, in the sense for me, is someone who is undeniably passionate about creating work and it has their heart and their soul and their truth in what they create. And for me, art is a combination of three things. It's your technical prowess, your creative ability, and then right down the center is your originality. So your experiences from life that help tie all three together and make it uniquely your own voice. And to create great art, don't just assume that that means high art or photorealism art or art that has like unbelievable detail in it. I mean, that is really cool and it could be the direction you take, but that's not necessary. For me, great art is created from people who have earnest intention behind what they're doing and they want to create works that either haven't been seen before or that is something uniquely special to them. And by doing this again and again, you will shape the artist that you will become. And over time, you'll build this style that will be unique and recognizable as your own. This is such a satisfying feeling when you achieve a style and a voice in your work that does feel uniquely you as an artist. But I just don't think that's the collective goal anymore. Instead, I'm seeing so many cloned versions of these established popular artists because people look at them and think, that's what I have to do. And they mimic it because they forget about their own personal journey as an artist and just feel like, okay, well, that worked for that artist, so I'm just going to follow that path. But I think we need to stop entangling the idea that if you're a popular artist, you must be a good artist. Because oftentimes, popular artists just have the widest reach. It doesn't mean necessarily that their art is great. Sadly though, this is the driving force for younger artists to perceive what being a great artist is, and they just follow that. And in my opinion, I just feel like this leads to a lot of work that just seems hollow and void of any real voice or emotion. So let's get into what I believe are the three main culprits for the celebration of mediocrity. And these are social media, the need to generate results, and feeling overwhelmed. So let's first talk about social media. With the drastic and ever-changing shifts in these algorithms and the formatting of how we even post our work over the years, I've seen the move from artists striving to create great art to creating great content. 
and therein lies the problem. These platforms are conditioning us to produce more than ever before and are rewarding quantity over quality with being as safe as you can and just kind of returning the same thing over and over to reach the largest audience because these platforms are built to keep users on it. So if they see that you are constantly producing work that keep people engaged with their platform, they're going to show you to more people. I'm sure you can think of a few art accounts that have these bloated followings, but when you look at their work, it's devoid of any heart or truth behind them. And we've come to accept that. Kind of more so forced to accept that, really. Not only with favorable follower returns, but that can translate into financial returns as well. And when money enters the playing field, people will respond, especially artists who are often just trying to get by. So I do my best not to judge them because I get it. And as I said earlier, I do love this community. I just want to mention this so that artists don't give up their own path in favor of these artificial ones. And change can always be expected, and adapting is just part of our position. I think with having so many changes the past few years and so much uncertainty, it's easy to get lost in it all. So currently, as of early 2023, the popular format for presenting your work is through the short format videos. And these are Reels, TikToks, and YouTube Shorts. And it seems as long as there's a clever transition in a seven second clip, the art is irrelevant. In fact, when I'm scrolling and I'm seeing these art videos, it really does seem like the art was more of an afterthought. And then here on YouTube, a lot of art channels that have the biggest followings are just entertainment based or they're opinion based videos where their art is rarely even seen. So these younger artists coming into our field are now less influenced to be artists themselves with their own unique voices and more to be influencers producing more of that same content themselves. It's the training of these platforms to produce more producers in this ever-growing consumer culture. And it does worry me sometimes thinking about the future of art if social media is the driving force behind what is created. So the next culprit I want to talk about is this fabricated need to generate results with our art. You see, I believe the bigger problem lies in with these artists and art channels that are no longer about making art, and instead it's about generating results of some kind. Similar to the current film industry, for the best financial return for the producers, they want to cast as wide a net as possible to reach the largest audience. So we end up with this continuous stream of mass-produced garbage. The packaging is simple, colorful, and predictable. And for us as artists seeing this type of work, and I'm sure for viewers as well, this oftentimes just reads very bland and safe. But I couldn't tell you the last time I described a great piece of art that I saw as bland and safe. Being an artist used to mean something. Now it's become kind of a joke. Art has become less about the why and what you create and more about how you format and present it. Or even worse, how well it will do on socials or how much money you can make by doing it. We've been seeing this a lot with the AI debate and how eliminating the process is a goal for some, while for others, the process and the journey you take while creating art is the point entirely. I often joke that the current art era that we're in, similar to the Impressionist era and the Renaissance period, and today we're in the age of commercialism. The art you create is only as good as its return value worth. Do you see what I'm saying here? It seems to be less about the personal value that you see in your pieces and more about the value that those pieces can give you in return. And I'm not immune to this either. I'd be lying if I said that when I see one of my drawings do better on my socials, that I don't see it in a better light. And in some cases, I really enjoyed a drawing, but then it's received poorly in its reception online, and admittedly my excitement faded for it a bit. The pattern that I began to see with art online, and not just from me, from everyone, was that the more detailed and complicated it was, the worse it tended to do. The best received art currently are ones that don't challenge the viewer. They're very comforting, and they can be recognizable in half a second. And you can bet that this influences how artists create moving forward, because it's another voice in our head telling us what we need to create rather than focusing on what we want to create. It kind of makes me sad not only talking about this, but then recording this in hindsight and how much I think it has influenced the directions I've taken over the years and how much I've been trying to push back against them. And I would bet that a lot of you feel a similar pressure before knowing what you want to create next. And that leads us to our final culprit, which is feeling overwhelmed. 
we no longer have the energy to carve out our own paths as artists, so instead we just end up playing the game. By the time you're actually ready to create art, you may be exhausted, and you may feel that if you don't cater to these parameters, your work's not even going to be seen by anyone. So what's the point? Instead of creating this new, obscure, fantastical forest creature that you had as an idea when you were on a hike, instead you're looking through popular TikTok songs to use in the background of a gimmick style video. And because of time constraints and the need to constantly be updating our socials to stay relevant, uh, we won't be creating these cool ideas. Instead, we'll create what we know will work, which are pretty girl profiles that are slightly stylized with flowing hair. And I'm not trying to call artists out, and I know some artists just love drawing that subject matter, but that's all that I'm seeing lately. And I know the intention behind a lot of them are most likely not because they enjoy doing it, it's because they feel they have to do it. And then on top of these internal personal struggles, the last few years have seen our art community fractured over and over again and again. Whether it's the changing landscapes of social media algorithms, the scandals that have come out in the community, the rise of NFTs, and more recently, the whole debate on AI-generated images. Although I will say it has been kind of cool seeing the art community kind of band together against that last one. So it's been hard navigating how do I even move forward as a modern artist? And this goes for every artist, regardless of age or skill level. How do you know which step to take forward when no path seems certain anymore? You may learn something new about an algorithm and then start implementing it, and then a month later it's no longer relevant. We can spend so much time learning how to present our artwork that could have been spent actually making the artwork. And this is why I believe mediocrity is parading as the new standard. Because this hollow, non-stop content creation mindset is consuming the way that we create. And this pushes us to generate more of the same content out of fear that we don't want to get left behind. But we shouldn't be making art because we feel forced. We should be making art because we want to. The process isn't something that we should see as a hindrance or a problem to overcome. The process is the beautiful part. It has ups and downs, and you end up taking a journey with the piece, and oftentimes you end up learning something about yourself. With AI generators removing that, and social media focusing on short attention gimmicks, we're left with pieces that certainly feel more like short bursts of content rather than an expression of self in an art form. So I know I'm casting a pretty dark cloud here, but I feel like I've been holding this in for a while and I wanted to record this to hopefully connect with other artists who are listening who might feel the same way. I mean, really, what has art become? And if art is truly subjective, then why do I care so much? because being an artist never started as an occupation for me. It was a way for a shy, gay art kid to find his voice when he was younger. I learned how to communicate with people without ever having to speak a word. And now that I'm older, exploring the depths of what's possible in the creation of art is what keeps it interesting. And now that I'm older, being able to put my experiences into my art form and sharing them with people that I may never meet but maybe could understand what I'm going through or maybe feel more understood as a person can be profound, even in a small way. And these connections have been a driving force for myself and a lot of other artists as we continue to move forward. And it's been hard navigating the current landscape, not just for me, but a lot of my art friends were spending a lot less time on actually making art and more time learning how to present and format it on socials to stay relevant. And worse is when we're making art that maybe we're not into, but we know it will sell well uh, just because we want to stay financially stable. But lately, it's been suffocating. There's so much overlapping noise in this world, and social media has everyone shouting for their chance at momentary attention. But rather than sharing unique experiences of creativity and technicality, I feel like we're battling for the real estate of attention people have while they're on their phones. And typically, these are with images that are not even necessarily reflections of the artists themselves. Instead, they're slightly altered images that are derivative of what's already trending on the For You page. And once again, I was also wrapped up in all of this, so I can't even necessarily blame any artist because I get it. I also felt the need to play the game or get left behind. And it wasn't until recently that I realized how much of my self-worth was really attached to posting on social media. But something happened last year that really did force me to reevaluate. So let me explain. This was during the summer right after my most successful Kickstarter campaign. I was riding that high and I was feeling pretty good. 
And within a week or two, I believe, I posted my next tarot illustration, which was The Hanged Man. The next morning, I was surprised to see that my Instagram account was suspended for allegedly promoting suicide. I thought this would be something that would go away in a week or two, especially if I could just talk to them. I didn't think this was going to be almost a year and a half dilemma until the account was unsuspended. But what I did see right away was my account following, which had been growing about 100 per day, flatlined like immediately. A couple months went by and yeah, it was bothering me, but I was still, you know, managing. And it wasn't until the fall that year that I was having some really tough mental breakdowns of what this meant for me as an artist. Because if my numbers on social media weren't able to grow, it was hard not to equate this to feeling like my growth as an artist had also stopped. So I caught myself, and sometimes desperately, looking for ways to grow that number, anything, just to see that growth again. But in doing so, I really did lose track of why I did art to begin with. I was following the trends, I was using the hot audios to work with, and while I did find some success with it, I just felt this overwhelming sadness that this is what we as artists have become. Basically, performing for the internet rather than creating for ourselves. But I continued to put stress on myself, and I continued to allow that lack of growth to define how I saw myself as an artist, and would do so until the summer of that following year. It was in the middle of July, and I had one of the best days of my life. It was the day that I proposed to my boyfriend, and we were at the Ren Fair, surrounded by all of our friends and closest family members, and we were dressed in these sun and moon costumes. I'm sure I'll pull up an image here. And it was just a really wonderful day. After posting the news to Instagram, I lost almost a thousand followers like instantly. And then I would lose hundreds the following days after. I remember having the initial reaction similar to when I post a piece of art and it's not received well, I'll see it in a lesser light. And I could feel myself doing the same for this very special day. But at that time, I was already kind of at my breaking point. And honestly, I was so exhausted from doing this little dance for social media, and I was just done. So from that day forward, I've been so much better at not allowing social media to control my perception of my reality and this beautiful life that I'm living. I felt like this giant weight had been lifted off of me, and I was able to break free from that pressure, even though to some degree it was self-applied. And in the months that followed that day, I had a very busy convention schedule, and then it led right into hosting and running Drawltober, and it wasn't until recently that I had time to really sit down and reflect on what revelation I kind of went through that day. It's really great what time can give you when you're searching for clarity. I really wasn't actively aware of how much social media was influencing what I create and how I posted it. And I'm sure a lot of you feel that same way. But I'm telling you, I feel like I've been really able to dive into what I want to create even doing things like recording YouTube videos again, but I don't think I would have been if I wasn't on this current path. And what's exciting is I feel like I don't have that pressure of feeling like I have to perform and create in a certain way. And lately I feel like I've tapped back into that wonderful feeling of what it means to be an artist again, where you can express yourself and share your experiences and truth in this visual format with other people without the worry of will it perform well or Will the right people see it? Instead, I'm more concerned with, do I enjoy what I'm creating and do I feel proud of what the end results are? And the great thing is, we all have that ability. I used to have that cliche artist mentality that nothing's original and nothing's unique anymore. But do you really think someone could create in the same way that you do, with the same tools that you work with, with the same life experiences that you've had? I choose to believe that while there is a lot of derivative work out there, and you see a lot of people just copying other people, there is also an opportunity for your story to be told, and it's unique in the sense that no one else has lived it. Maybe they have had similar life journeys, and that's where those connections begin. Not with pursuing the creation of art to gain followers, but pursuing art to gain connections. At least right now, that is the mentality I want to share with you on how I believe not to be a mediocre artist. And there are times where I slip back into those old feelings, but they're much more momentary now because I have the tools to remember why I let them go, because they no longer serve me. So that's what I'm hoping to get out of this video, is to communicate that I believe great art is made with humanity behind it, not with numbers or expected statistics. And in the pursuit of achieving the desired result is the joy of why we create in the first place.
There's a quote that I really want to share, and it's from one of my favorite screenwriters, whose name is Charlie Kaufman, and he also directed one of my favorite films called Synecdoche, New York. And this was from a lecture where he was talking about the work we want to create. And it goes like this. What can be done? Say who you are, really say it in your life and in your work. Tell someone out there who is lost, someone not yet born, someone who won't be born for 500 years. Your work will be a record of your time. It can't help but be. But more importantly, if you're honest about who you are, you will help a person be less lonely in their world because that person will recognize him or herself in you and that will give them hope. And it's done so for me and I have to keep rediscovering it. It's profound importance in my life. Give that to the world rather than selling something to the world. Don't allow yourself to be tricked into thinking that the way things are is the way that the world must work and that in the end, selling is what everyone must do. Try not to. Just remember that you have value that can be added to the art world. Your voice doesn't have to be adjusted to fit what's consumable. If you're currently producing work that you feel is catering to what's expected, I would reevaluate. I've certainly had to do so, and I'm curious if every modern artist has to confront these feelings at some point in their journey. Sadly, I don't have all the answers on how to move forward in this issue. I know that my art friends and I have talked endlessly about how bleak it feels moving forward. I can say though that I'm on this journey with those of you who are watching who also feel the same way. It can feel powerless to change the momentum that the current art world is on right now. Something that has helped me though is to stop comparing so much. I have moments where I get so wrapped up by this constant flow of what's working or what's trending right now that I often forget about getting lost in what I love and what connects with me. Take a moment to look within and really discover what makes art exciting for you. Is it your interests or your experiences? Whatever it is, create from that source and stay on that path. I find that artists that share that type of work, regardless of skill or regardless of creativity, never feel mediocre. Before we end this, I also opened up this question to my Instagram and asked, what frustrations do you have with the current state of the art world? So I want to share a few of them and give a response. You may even find yourself feeling aligned with what some of them had to say. So for these, I'm going to move over and I'm going to have the questions appear right here as I ask them. So there was some really good insight on answering this question, and I also saw a lot of similar feelings about different topics. So one on AI is people are questioning the integrity of my original work and claiming that I have copied from AI art. Yes, this is something that has been kind of happening the past few months, where a lot of digital artists specifically are getting asked in their comment section, what AI program did you use? And it's been frustrating for a lot of them because they aren't using generators. So for them, it feels like it's invalidating their work. I don't think this problem is going to go away anytime soon. If anything, I think it's going to actually get worse. I personally haven't had to deal with it as much because I don't feel like the pencil AI has been great so far, but I'm sure it will in time. Uh, and I think this is something that we're going to have to almost prove that we did the art in some way, sadly whether that's a video time lapse or some way of showing that you are not generating the final images. Next we have, look, others have success with that skill level too. You are just being too harsh on yourself. So this one's kind of a hard one to answer because I feel like it's more of a statement of wherever skill level you're at, you can definitely get ahead in the art world. I've seen arts that I didn't think were that great on either a technical or creative level, but are doing even leagues above me, whether it's in social gain or financial return. I think the best thing to do here is try not to compare so much. I think it can be a detriment for growth as an artist. And if you are gonna compare yourself, I would compare yourself to who you were yesterday or a month ago or a year ago, and hopefully you're able to see growth. The fact that our skill and talent aren't rewarded unless we are a good salesman. Yeah, I feel like nowadays it doesn't really matter what is in the content of the art itself as long as it's formatted and presented in a way that is best suited for whatever social platform you're going to see a good return and it's bothers me at least because i feel like we should bring it back to the content of the work being the primary focus like if the end result was all that mattered yeah this goes back to what i said in the video where i think the process is a valuable part of art making i think if you remove that I don't think art has as much soul to it. And I think we need to find joy in the process of making art again. 
sad about the fact that we all have to entertain and sell our art to be considered worthy of attention. Yeah, this is not a great feeling uh, for any artist, regardless of where you're at currently. I feel like this is something we all feel on some level, especially if you're participating in the current landscape, which is posting on socials and specifically making videos. And most of us are not video editors, so this is like an extra challenge on top of the challenge of being an artist. My hope is that as artists can start veering their direction more towards what they authentically want to create, regardless of how well it will perform or how well it will sell, they'll find more of a satisfaction and joy in what they're doing. The fact people still think all abstract art is without effort and bad and only realism is real art. I experienced this more when I was younger. Before high school, I would draw a lot of realism uh, because I was starting to notice that I was getting praised for it. And then I went to high school and my art teacher totally pushed me the other direction, like full abstract. And I think I was able to find like a happy medium between the two. But I do agree that I think the general public look at realism and photorealism art with a higher level of praise because I think there's a technical aspect that they can appreciate and it's a skill that they do not have. So when they see that, they see, you know, years of training and when they see abstract art, sadly, sometimes they just see paint splatter on a canvas. And if they can do it, why would it be considered art? So try not to let this bother you too much. I think this is allowing other people's opinion to dictate what is good and bad art. And I think we have to remember that we get to decide what art is for us and what art we choose to include in our lives. That it became content. Quickly consumed, scrolled past, forgotten. Faster, faster, soulless. Yeah, I think this is what got me the most the past few years. And I felt like as soon as I finished an illustration, literally the moment I posted it on social media, it was dead. It was no longer a relevant piece of art that I could be proud of because I had to move on to the next. Like, what is the next piece? And I realized as I was working on one and I was finishing it up, I was so focused on what the next piece would be that I didn't really give any of my passion to the drawing that was in front of me. It just felt like a means to an end. And that is definitely not the way that I want to view art either. Oh, this is a good one. Social media gives validation and the people take it as if they have peaked and do not need to improve. Yes, I believe that artists hit a certain threshold in their career where they know they are good enough. They are good enough to make money, they are good enough for social gains, and they don't feel the need to improve anymore. Now, I'm not going to you know, berate an artist for doing so, but I know for me personally, I never want to be considered that type of an artist. So when I can feel myself entering into that territory, I try to pivot as soon as I'm aware and push myself to do something that is challenging on some level. Because I do very much agree with this statement, and sadly, I think that's also where a lot of this mediocrity comes from, is artists that think they are amazing, when in reality, no, they just create pieces that are good enough. When a final detail goes wrong and ruins the whole piece, I think I relate to this more when I love the 70% finished version of my drawing more than I love the 100% finished. I think there's something about letting parts of a drawing stay unfinished that gives it a little more mystery, and I feel like I lose that element when I finish it. So I definitely uh, resonate with this statement. Sometimes it's really hard to control my feelings and portray them in my art. Yeah, I think this may come down to maybe doing more thumbnails or maybe exploring that idea. There's a quote from an artist that I really like. His name is Corey Gabi. He's a friend of mine. And he said, look at your art like a prism. So look at it from every angle. And the idea is maybe you have a set emotion that you want to capture, but you're looking at it only from one way. Try thinking of different ways to interpret it and capture it in like a visual form. Pay the bills art versus art for personal growth has different vibes. Indeed it does. I feel like you put more into the art that you want to create over the art that you feel you have to create. And this is a conversation I've had with so many artists over the years. And usually we format it in a slightly different way. The way that stuck with me the most was creating art that are vegetables and creating art that is candy. You create the art that are vegetables for yourself and they nourish you and they're good for you. And you create art that is candy for other people and to bring people in. And 
this is something that I don't know if it'll ever go away, but I do think every artist can recognize when they do art for themselves versus when they do art for others. The standard has always been mediocre. It's the highs and lows that stand out. Oh, this is a great take. This is from my friend Alex. Uh, he's a great artist. You should check him out. But on some level, I do agree with it, especially in recent times. I would say back in like the 1600s till the turn of the 19th century, I do think the standard was set much higher. And especially at the time where, you know, these painters were painting in chapels because they thought they were painting for God. Like imagine if your client was the all-powerful being that created everything and you had to impress him. Um, I think there was a higher standard that was set for ours back then uh, compared to now. But it is interesting thinking about it. And when I look at art nowadays, I actually do agree that yes, it's the highs and lows that really do stand out where even for the general public, I feel like they can recognize when art isn't great. So the lows, but they can also recognize when it is like mind blowing. Like if they look at the Sistine Chapel, they're not going to see that and compare it with an Instagram image and think, you know, comparable. I'm frustrated by the speed at which content is required, which leads to mediocrity, in my honest opinion. Yeah, I definitely agree. I don't think you should ever rush art. I don't think that means that art can't be done quickly, but I think it's when you rush art that it becomes sloppy. I feel pressured to create faster, quantity over quality. Everyone wants to see finished works. I do think there's something to be said about trying to work on efficiency in your work and to try to eliminate, as my friend Sean would say, like noodling. Uh, when you're kind of just like working a piece, but you're not really making any progress, I think that's good to eliminate. But if you're just pressured to create faster for the sake of creating faster, I agree. I don't think that is a good thing because then you're not allowing yourself to take the journey with the piece. And like I mentioned in the video, I think the process is so important to the heart of what you're creating. People act when cameras are on. Social media art is heavily edited slash performative and branded. Yeah, I can't deny that. Even when recording videos or even when I post things on Instagram, there's some level of me that edits it slightly or maybe I don't feel comfortable posting fully my opinions on something. And that's something I really do want to change in 2023. So even starting with this video that I think is a little bit of a hot take, uh, I want to start showing more of my truth and how I feel about things. So I'd love to hear from any of you that made it through this entire video if you feel in a similar way to what we talked about. Do you have frustrations with the current state of the art world that I didn't even mention or your place within it? Comment below as I actually do read all of the comments I get here on YouTube. As always, thanks for listening to me ramble. And if you want to keep the conversation going, you can join my exclusive Patreon community. And with that, you also get to see every illustration I create from start to finish. Thanks again for checking out this video and you can watch more right now.